How we doing, our squad? It's a beautiful night to see you on this lovely Wednesday afternoon in November. Can you believe it? Can you believe November is already here? If you don't have one of these hats, you should buy one at the next R Squad Live. We met at R Squad Live a couple days ago, smashed up a car pretty good, roasted tons of s'mores. So many students came out for this awesome night, Star Wars themed. We talked all about wisdom. I think it was probably one of my favorite R Squad Lives yet. So thank you so much for being there. If you missed this one, please do not miss the final R Squad Live of the year. That's the R Squad Christmas party. More details to come here shortly. At R Squad Live, we talked about the best question ever. The best question ever. And the question is, what's the wise thing for me to do? Not the right thing, not the legal thing, not what can I do and get away with, not what is everybody else doing, but what is the wise thing for me to do? Based on our past experiences, our current circumstances and our future hopes and dreams, what is the wise thing for me and for you to do? Last week at our squad, we talked about our past experiences. And so today, you guessed it, we're talking about the present. The whole idea of this series, haves and have nots, is so we can focus less on what we don't have or less on what other people have, what we wish we had, and we can focus on the things that we already have so that we can be wise in the past, present, and the future. Story time. So, a couple years back, one of my good friends asks me to come DJ at one of his youth ministry events that he's having in Indiana. Of course, I say yes, I grab all of my gear, I take it up there, we're hanging out, we're setting it up, we're having a great time. The, the night begins, we're playing all of this incredible music, tons of students are out on the floor, and I look over and I see about three to four high school girls who are kind of grouped up in this circle, and they're talking to each other, and I see them come up with this plan. Now, they hadn't been dancing or participating in the night in any way, but they decide that they want to create the illusion that they are all having fun and enjoying this big party. So what I see them do is one of them takes out their phone, she's got it in selfie mode, and they all start to jump into the picture. They're jumping around, waving their hands, having a good time, singing the words, going crazy, dancing, and they create the illusion that for four to five seconds, it looks like they're having the time of their lives partying it up. But the reality is, that was the only four or five seconds they danced and looked like they had fun the entire night. Here's the thing though, what they are doing is being focused on the future, a future post, a future caption, a future comment, posting something in the future. They missed out on a moment in the present because they were so concerned about a moment in the future. Have you ever been so focused on what happened in the past or what might happen in the future that you miss out on what's happening right now? If all we ever do is relive the most embarrassing or exciting parts of the past, we'll miss out on the present. If all we ever do is dream or worry about what may or may not happen in the future, we'll miss out on the incredible things that are happening right in front of us. When we're constantly scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through life, we miss out on what is actually happening in the present right in front of us. Last week, we started talking about an Old Testament hero by the name of Moses. Moses was a guy who was originally supposed to be killed by the Egyptian government, but he actually ends up living in Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh's the ruler of Egypt. Moses has got a pretty rough past, you could say, but after a while, God appears to Moses in the form of a burning bush. Pretty interesting. Moses and God end up having this conversation where God says that he sees the cries and the oppression that is happening of the Israelite people in Egypt. God wants to do something about this. He wants to set those people free and he wants to use Moses to be the leader to carry out this project here on the earth. When God tells Moses he wants him to be the leader of this special assignment. But Moses protested to God, who am I to 
appear before Pharaoh. Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? He's worried about the fact that he's not a very good communicator. He's not good with words. He's got a stuttering problem. And so he says again to God, but Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say, the Lord never appeared to you? And then we've got the part that I want to focus in on tonight is verse 2 and 3. Then the Lord asked him, what is that in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Throw it down on the ground, the Lord told him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. Moses jumped back. The story continues on and God's able to use this miracle right here to show Moses that he's going to be with him no matter what and that Moses is able to speak with authority to the Israelite people on behalf of God because God's with him and God will make sure that these people know Moses is the leader of this project and God's got their back. But I love this question that God asks Moses. What's in your hand? Moses is probably feeling a little bit of regret from the past, not feeling adequate enough to carry out the specific mission of God. He's probably also a little worried about the future. What are people going to say when Moses tries to take this message to them and they don't believe him? What is in your hand? Translation, you already have everything that you need to carry out this assignment right now. I don't know the specifics of your current circumstances, but could it be that God is simply asking you what is in your hand? Do you already have the thing that's going to allow you to do what God has wanting you to do here in the present? God's already redeemed the past. He's prepared and made a way for us to live the best life possible in the future. Could it be that he already is telling you you're enough, you're called, you're worth it, you're ready, you have what you need? What's the thing that you've been overlooking that you can use right now for good in your own current circumstance? But I think before we need to hear God tell us what to do, we need to hear God tell us who we are. So right now I want you to get out your notes, I want you to get out a pen, I want you to remove any and every distraction wherever you're at right now that's going to prohibit you from fully living present in this moment right now. I believe that if we can fully understand, comprehend, and believe who God says that we are, it will allow us to have wisdom and clarity in using whatever is in our hand for good in the middle of our current circumstances now. So I'm going to read one of the Psalms written by King David. I hope you find rest in it. I hope you are able to live in the moment right now. I hope it brings clarity to you about knowing who you are and being confident of what you can do with what is currently in your hand. Here it is, Psalm 139. It's titled, Search Me God and Know My Heart. Here it goes. Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. 
and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Live in the present. Pay attention to what's going on around you and ask yourself this question, what's in my hand?